you guys uh your music is amazing i i've listened to you for the last couple of days non-stop so I, i've really been enjoying it thank you uh, I, i have a brother and you know siblings uh tend to have rivalries and it's difficult to work with each other you guys have been doing it for 14 years creating music how has that experience been for you guys Yeah, being siblings and being in a band for as long as we have, we've definitely had some um some issues with like balancing the band aspect and the sibling aspect. Yes, we definitely have our ups and downs here and there, but we are very similar. In fact, some of our comments say, "Are you guys triplets?" But we're like, "No, we're just really close because we live together and we honestly have the same kind of vision, so we don't really fight that yeah, much." Yeah, and that was one of the coolest things that happened to us during the pandemic was we got to live in the same house, obviously. We live together. So that aspect did not change. We got to do our live stream concerts and write a ton of music, which I'm so happy you've enjoyed listening to our music. That means a lot to us. Uh and you guys uh, do weekly live streams of your music. Uh, how does that go? Like uh why have you decided to do this because most people most artists don't do this. They they tend to wait to do big concerts instead of doing small uh, live streams. Yeah, doing live stream concerts is something that my sisters and I very much value is the live sound of a band because we talk about it all the time. The difference between a studio recording and doing live shows and both by the way, are wonderful ways to showcase your music, but we have fans, the K3SB fam, who listen to us from over 50 countries across the world, from Spain, Mexico, you know, Japan and Korea, and so we're very yeah. thankful for all of those and fans. And before the pandemic, we did shows at various coffee houses and fairs and festivals and large venues, and in 2019 towards the end, we were already experimenting with how to use live streaming equipment and we were gathering it and so when the pandemic hit we were already had done the research on how to do it and so we really just knuckled down and buckled down in 2020 and started doing live shows and we've just been able to reach so many fans all across the world awesome and uh going back to the, the sister thing uh when writing music the does uh What kind of obstacles do you, do you guys have a face um, when creating your music? The obstacle is that we have so much music, we don't know what to put out first. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, which song do we release now, guys? Yeah, like, what even, goes up even to the top? With our, <laughs> even with our newest album coming out, Jeff Like Hearts, we've had to really calculate which songs we want to put on this album because we have so much new material since our last project, which was 13, our last album. So... We we love songwriting and that's one thing that really got to flourish during the pandemic. We wrote so many songs and we got to really experiment with that during our live stream concerts. Uh yeah, uh, we're having so much music. Uh, does that make the every live stream different? Does it do you bring in new material every single live Oh stream? yes. In fact, we always like to say expect the unexpected with a K3 Sisters band concert. You never know what to expect. We have a brand new de newly designed set list at every one of our shows and our fans love coming to guess which songs we're going to do. And in it's fact, a lot of fun. That's one major difference that we do from other bands is that we do our new songs at our live streams first before we put it on an album because we really want to see how they react to it. And then that's when we go in the, into the studio and kind of expand on that song to to really... Make to, it sound. To, to the fullest. Yeah, exactly. Yes. We have such an eclectic range of music and storytelling in our songs. And so that's why we created our playlists on our website, which is k3sistersband.com, where we have a song for every mood you could ever be in. <laughs> Definitely. And uh, like you said, you guys go into different genres of music. You guys play a bunch of different instruments. Uh, how, how, I guess, how do you choose what you put out? How do you, you know, I guess how how do you create a pl uh, a set list for your lives? How do you know what song you want to release into the world at what time? 
Okay, so as far as the original songs go in the set list, that's a really great question, by the way. No one's really asked us that. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Um, we try to evenly spread out our songs. We try to never do the same song the next week as we do, did the week before. And it's, it's kind of a vibe. We go through and we're like, okay, we have to have some songs where we're each singing a solo and we have to have some with the fiddle and we have to have some with uh, edgy and the chill. mandolin like we we try to have a and, very diverse set of songs yeah, each time and because we are each multi-instrumentalists we try at times to do songs where we're each playing the same instrument and it's kind of hard because we're switching constantly during our yeah. shows but we like to create our set list kind of like a puzzle and kind of piece them together in a way where we can even do transitions and that's how some of our fans guess which song we're going to do is based on what girl is playing what instrument and i don't know how they do it yeah. but they they're like detectives they know yeah. somehow we like to use the w method for picking our songs where you have a high speed one and then you bring it down and then you go back up and then you end it with a great one and yeah we re also recently went to the taylor swift movie and we loved it so much because she is one of our huge uh lyricist inspirations and so and she did the same thing she yes, did she the did w. the same thing. It was <laughs> really her. cool. Definitely. Uh, playing so many instruments, how long has it taken you guys to master these instruments or, you know, just get used to playing these live? Great question. Our parents, we have to give credit to them because they're the ones that put us into our violin lessons at a very young age. I was about to turn four and I was already holding four a fiddle, going into fiddle lessons. And so we've been learning different instruments throughout our lives, but the fiddle was first for all of us. Um, so we've been playing that for over 10 years. Yes. And then we also learned how to play guitar and then it just expanded Kristen learned mandolin and drums, drums yes over time the drums she's really knuckled down on the drums and I'm really very proud of yes her. in fact with our recent album coming out this December jet black hearts we really wanted this album to be unlike anything we've ever done and so this one we're experimenting with my hybrid drum set the acoustic and electric drums so when you listen to it kpsb fam and jesus it's going to have a flavor unlike anything you've ever heard of that classic rock and roll with some modern mixed in and your newest instrument the ukulele yes the ukulele, yes, the ukulele. <laughs> oh my newest baby yeah we say it's you're never too old or too young to learn how to play an instrument yes I, we're I uh, say and Stay that there. was the good thing. Our parents realized that the fiddle specifically, we call it that here in Texas, the fiddle. We never call it the violin, really. They're they're so small. And then as you grow up, you can just size up and up. And finally, you'll get the full size. So, But yes, we're always trying to inspire people to learn the skill of playing an instrument. It might take some years and some sacrifice, but it's so worth it in the end because it lasts with you for a lifetime. Yeah, and we always have a saying, you know, when you play these different instruments, they can kind of hurt your fingers or tear them up but we have a saying called sore fingers are happy fingers because <laughs> you're making music it so. means you're doing something yeah. right <laughs> definitely and you guys seem very passionate about this uh, what, what keeps that passion up what keeps your energy going Absolutely. It's the K3SB fam. They seeing their kind messages on our videos or even just liking our videos or what they think about our newest song that we debut. That is so important to me, that community that we've built. And it's just grown and grown over the years. Yeah. If, if you would have told us 10 years ago, like you guys are going to have over 1 billion views and likes worldwide. and You're going to have fans that actually know your music. I would have been like, Wow, we 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 made it, you know. Wow. And and we always look to the next thing. We always want to become better and learn more about what we do cuz right now we're fully independent. We run everything ourselves and that's actually a major uh thing that we struggle with is balancing the band aspect versus the social media aspect. Yes, because we currently are not with a record label. We are a do it yourself band. And so we really love that intimate connect with our fans. We have a direct to fan modus operandi and we love and value their respect and love and they know that we yes. also respect authenticity mm -hmm. and so we really try to push that in our music. Yes, and we also really value to have our own creative control to be able to write the songs we want and release them when we want and 
Yeah, yeah. make sure <laughs> to stream these songs of almost 100 original songs on our website, k3sistersband.com. Definitely. I mean, uh, you guys have the K3 model. Exactly what is that model? <laughs> yes, yes, the hashtag K3 model. Jesus, yes. We, we had a pretty long list at first, but then we narrowed it down to these three sentences. I will always believe in myself and celebrate my life and the lives of others. I will respect the music and customs of others as long as they are not harmful to anyone. I will stand against bullying of any kind and choose love over hate. Hashtag K3, K3 motto. motto. <laughs> and we made that motto not only for us because we were experiencing some cyber bullying at the time when we wrote it back in 2014, 2014. but it's just become something now that beyond our wildest dreams, our fans are connecting with it. They're sharing it. They're buying the motto magnet. Yes. Um, yes which is awesome. And they're sharing it to their friends. And the parents also have given us feedback of saying, thank you so much for creating this motto and giving my my family this positive um, thing that they can hold on to. Yeah. And it honestly means so much to us because we created it back in 2014 to kind of help us and each other. And we shared it to the world and our fans just have gravitated towards it over the years and it's literally gone all the way around the world and back people in so many different countries are learning the k3 motto and, and striving to live by it they're even saying it in their own native language which is so cool to see how it's spreading to their communities and we love seeing how the k3sb fam films themselves saying the motto and they post it online and it's so cool we love showing it at our shows as well of them saying it so it's very important to spread love and we do that through our music. Definitely. And uh, I really enjoy the K3 model because uh, I'm a big advocate for mental health. And this this model definitely uh, is important. Uh, what, what, what kind of uh, things do you guys do for mental health uh, and, you know, to support each other and keep, make sure that each one of you guys are doing well? Good question. I mean, we always have like coffee meetings a lot where we just vent to each other. We go on walks together. Um, we go, we love going to different like open mics at various coffee shops and listening to other people. We don't really, we don't sing at these open mics. We just love, cause we're music lovers. Yes. We, we go to enjoy the other music and it's a great way for us to decompress. Yes. And we also love to go on hikes together. We love hiking. It's one of our favorite hobbies. And I also love to cook and bake. And so sometimes to like relieve some stress I will bake a cake and for my family and I also love to decorate them with like intricate piping work it's very like therapeutic to do that yes <laughs> and I, I like to do some sewing just some handiwork sewing of upcycling or adding some bedazzle you know a little bling to some of my suits or random clothes and I do recommend to the K3SB fam and anyone else listening to find those little moments of joy in your life. For us, it's listening to music and these other things we mentioned, but find those moments. You, it could even be a person that brings you joy, but find that and hold on to it and explore that joy that it brings you. And when you're in those dark moments, think of the motto and think of that happiness and it will bring some light. Awesome. Well, congratulations on everything. You guys definitely deserve the, the social media attention you guys have gotten. Um, continue on in your path, and I really hope to hear more music from you guys because I really have been awestruck with uh, a lot of the music you guys put out. Thank you so much, Jesus. Jesus, thank you so much. That means a lot coming from you. Awesome. Thank you, guys.